Dobar dan i dobrodošli. Good afternoon and welcome. After a short break, we are continuing with our second panel under the title Environment and uh, Protection of envi environment, Environmental Protection Through Policies, Representation of the Environmental Topics in the Political Agendas. Uh, in a political dialogue, or to what extent our elected of uh, politicians deal with the environment? On my left, we have uh, Sami Lemesh from Eko Zenica, then Jamila Agic from the Association Center, the Center for Environmental uh, for Environment and Ecology, then Mr. Vedr Nyankovic, NMP in the Cantonal Assembly of Sarajevo, Ms. Sanela Klaric from Green Council Sarevo and Darko Vujovic from uh, Tuzla Canton, an MP or Assembly MP. So, as we would like to say, well, in our case, we will never make a mistake if to say by saying that we have election every year or every second year. So, the question is actually whether we have environment and environmental issues as a topic on the political agenda. And what is your impression about uh, all these topics really being um, dealt with after the elections? You know, are they really followed through after they've been promised or uh, discussed during the political um, campaigns? Well, I can. I come from Tuzla Canton. I would say that um, on equal footing with Zenica, we are the most affected by pollution. So there is no political subject in our canton who hasn't talked about environment. However, none of this really uh, moved any further from dry talk. As soon as the executive power is formed, the issue of environment is not really addressed, you know. So why am I saying this? First of all, because there is a very limited funding. I can say that, well, I live in Tuzla and Tuzla as a local community, as a local self-government is a center of not only mining industry or, the, you know, but without Tuzla, there will be no chemical industry in BIH. We have a part of the city which is not suitable for construction because of the salt and sometimes from one kilo of salt um, some money would be allocated for you know rehabilitation of that salt so now this is no longer the case we have lost some giant companies Electroprivreda gives actually some incentives, you know, for the um, developing the network and for rehabilitation or, you know, reclamation of land. But again, none of this is really enough because obviously, you know, if we have area that will be flooded due to some constructions, then these incentives are far greater than the ones that are received by Tuzla for accumulation of, um, Salt. So, to in our case, all this is actually reduced to a very small amount, simply because the politics is involved in other matters. In particular, once they are elected to the offices, they care couldn't care less for for the environment. You know, I have to say that, um, as Mr. Karadzin have said, it took us thirty to forty years to to extract coal in the former circle of uh, company Huck. Now the question is what to do with this sludge or this waste material. So without support of the country, the, the, the national level, we can't really deal with it, you know. Nevertheless, you know, this is something that has been deposited sitting out there for 30 to 40 years, you know, and as Mr. Karadzin has said, I mean, now he's, you know, at the head of the ministry and I think that situation will be now different, you know, but we have uh, adopted the um, spatial plan of Tuzla Canton and now we have agreed that we will not be doing the Pokusicki Broad, but if we are to do the block seven, what are we going to do with it? This is the issue which hasn't been addressed. 
Now we've agreed that we've, this will not be Shichki Broad, but now where are we going to do it, actually, if not there? No one actually made this decision. So this issue is still an issue for the local community. The Federation doesn't care much about it, let alone state level. But let's hope that the awareness of the citizens will change. I have to say, when we speak about these environmental issues, through Tuzla and Živinice, you know, goes through the downtown of Tuzla and Živinice. We're talking about 200,000 population being affected by the traffic going through the city. Well, yes, the environmental issues are mentioned in the political campaigns or the election campaigns. I have impression that in these campaigns, they really say what people would like to hear, but since environment is close to any person. If we talk about pollution or water, waste, energy, whatever you talk about, people understand that and they like listening about that. And of course, they can attract citizens' attention. And that's why the politicians are really taking advantage of this topic. But once they win the seats, they keep forgetting about all this talk. So I see no any planned implementation or delivery of the promises that they made in the election campaigns. There was a lot of talk about Tuzla and Tuzla Canton. In a way, you know, all this discussion is about the thermal power plant and Block 7. It's a pity that we really talk about that only because Green Agenda speaks much, you know, involves much broader uh, possibilities. So it's a pity to focus only on Block 7 or nothing else, you know, because as I said, it's a very broad area of activity. And when we look at the Green Deal or Green Agenda for the Western Balkans, we see all the possibilities for the action. Um, I didn't, you know, ask questions, you know, when I was in the audience because I knew that I will be the panelist. But it hurts me when it talks when we talk about Block Seven or the miners in such a way because we speak about, you know, uh, thousands of citizens, but we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of people because all of us who live there we suffer consequences of some decisions, you know. So not only miners should be taken into account. All of us should be taking account. We are electing politicians to make decisions to protect us, but these decisions should be made based on expert uh, evidence. But no one should say that like, you know, Green River in Una, let's have it in Tuzla. And I don't care if there is a polluted air in Živinica. I don't care about those people there because it's important for us that we have electricity and that we are independent. And Minister Karajin nicely said, it will take us seven wind farms to replace, uh, you know, thermal plants. We, maybe we don't need to really do seven of them. Maybe we can do three wind parks and then maybe the four solar plants, you know. So I think that there are lots of opportunities for the development and prosperity of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have very uh, favorable, um, you know, potentials. So in particular now, you know, driving to uh, Sarajevo, we were driving through the mountains. It's a beautiful country. We need to use its potential by using the potential and resources in a smart way. Ms. Rednich and then Mr. Lemesh. Since the topic was actually, or the question was uh, for the politicians, to what extent they use environment as a topic in their campaigns and to what extent they really deliver upon their promises in that area. I have to say that whatever I promised in my campaign, I'm really working on that. You know, I regularly raise initiatives related to environment in Zenica Dobu Canton, in particular because we in our canton face with a lot of problems, not only with the air pollution, but with wild landfill, with the plastics, pollution of the river Bosnia which is named, um, you know, after the, you know, Bosnia. So I, I'm not saying that, um, you know, and I don't think that Bosnia River is any less important than Una or any other river in Bosnia and Herzegovina. But what, what's the problem? Uh, and of course, I can speak about my problem when I entered the assembly of Zenica Dobo Canton because I was uh, part of the opposition and I'm still part of the opposition. But at a certain point, we were the ruling party, we were in coalition. What we did back then was that by preparing the first agenda for the college, we have found, uh, you know, the initiative 
made by Sami Lemesh, you know, who was in the assembly before me in Zenitsa Doba can Canton. And his initiative was action plan for the environmental protection of Zenitsa Doba Canton. I, I can't recall the exact year, but back then it was um, tabled and it was adopted. But what happened when such good initiatives are adopted? And of course, um, and again, of course, when the change in the government happens, then it doesn't happen anything, you know, nothing, you know, just as nothing happened when Zenitsa Dobe Canton adopted uh, NAP or the CAP, cantonal um, ac uh, environmental action plan by 2022. They have formed a team, the working group, which was supposed to monitor the implementation of CAP, but they as a group never met. Then a new government was adopted and, you know, now it's 2021, the new team has not yet been established. Uh, you know, so when I'm saying this, uh, I'm just trying to say, or we can all understand that um, there is a huge problem with the people really working in the ministries. Maybe they have the lack capacities. Maybe we're talking about people who are not really uh, capable of doing the jobs uh, within the ministry because you know i mean i wanted to raise this question about assistant minister from zenitsa dobo canton i mean he just recently joined but by now he should have known that the regional dep land def fill is not a wild land fill Moschanica. so some things are very horrible when they are articulated out loud you know so obviously we need to see when you know, this raises a question of when will my initiative for abolishing plastic bags will be considered? So what we as politicians could do is just to be persistent with our initiatives, to somehow try to get some media space to communicate this message to the citizens. But in Zenitsa Doboy Canton, you have situation where our sessions are not recorded. Um, many things are kind of, you know, done under the veil of secrecy. And, um, you know, there are commissions formed here and there for the purpose of allocating some funds to different associations. So now we will ha are to have next session in a couple of days, but we still don't have the report on the names of the associations that will be granted money. So this is how arrogant the government is, you know. And of course, that citizens are not informed and this is really planned because the point is that obviously the citizen are, citizens are not well informed and that's why they can't submit all the paperwork that is required. Through my environmental um, activism, I often appear in the media and some foreign media asked me this question. To what extent are the environmental policies or the topics are present in the platforms of the political parties. I've referred to some study and indeed in the parties of the center and the left parties, you would see that these environmental topics are really high in their political platforms. However, the parties that are more of the right orientation, these topics are almost not mentioned. Occasionally you might may find some, but even if they are there, they would be somewhere at the bottom of the priority because I guess this is quite natural to the right wing parties. But what I wanted to say is that like, okay, having this in, polit in policy or the politics is fine, but once you are in power, no matter whether you are in the opposition or the ruling party, then of course the topics that are anticipated in their political programs are not there, but they will start talking about issues that are not at all communicated during their elections, you know. So, of course, now they switch their rhetorics to the fact that, okay, it's not up to me, I can't do much about it, you know, and they would say this is not the competence of the canton, it is the federation, so they're kind of shifting the ball to the court of the other parties, and this is something that is really dominant, you know. But these topics are indeed present, and as uh, said, you know, they are easily falling into oblivion as soon as the elections are over. But what does it take to ensure better visibility of these topics, you know, because we have heard the comments, you know, about money. Money's not there. 
well, partly it is true that this is one of the reasons, but is there anything else that could make all these topics more visible, more present in a political discussion? Mr. Jakubovic? Well, good day to everyone. Thank you for inviting me. The Ecological Task Force organized by NDI is the group that I got involved in too, coming from a completely different field. And, and now I'll try to explain how we could increase visibility. And that's the healthcare system. Because the foundation of all of this is health and we do have policies. Uh, policies are there in the programs. Even when you are part of the governing structure, I was in the governing structure um, in the Sarajevo Canton, and it is known as the richest canton. And the uh, CAP has a lot of financial possibilities compared to other cantons. But despite all that, the majority of activities, as the colleague mentioned, boils down to the following. We launch a small initiative, we push it until the end, trying to have it completed. This is in ecology. Environment as a field somehow emerges in urgent situations. And again, we have a man as a central concept. We are the most urban canton. All other cantons have huge non-urban territories. They're not as urbanized as uh, Sarajevo Canton. And the types of pollution are different. And based on the analysis that we have available, we have individual a heating problem, we have pollution because of traffic, we don't have as much industry as other cantons, but we do have high urbanization, so we must think about the health of citizens and apply a marketing aspect to this to attract the public attention. And when a problem arises, then we have the attention of the public. There is a landfill in Bucha Potok. So people in the Novi Grad municipality have a much bigger problem than people living in Stari Grad municipality. And the majority of initiatives to resolve that aspect of the policy, in fact, starts from the city. So when we, once we have the awareness activated, then we can start talking about serious policies. Everything else is just you know, makeup for the public. So in the end, now I'd just like to uh, tell you a very interesting story from the marketing point of view. Uh, when the uh, Katrina uh, hurricane happened in the United States, one of the ways to, in fact, engage people to get evacuated and to save their lives was to write their social security number on their hand or their arm. So if you want to stay here, make it easier for us. We have to identify you you know later. So it was an intimidation measure, in fact. And then people realized how important and how large a problem is. So they started resolving it at an, at an individual level. Do you think that the citizens recognize the importance, acknowledge the importance of environment protection? And uh, that do we see that in their interaction? No. No. If you ask me, my answer is no. Uh, individually, no. Mrs. Klaric, good day to everyone. This is a very important topic. I will agree with 
my colleagues. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is not a topic that is recognized as important, irrespective of whether we take the health perspective or any other perspective, not even economic. So it's a side topic to say, especially when we're talking about the ruling parties. So even if they speak about this in the election campaign, they forget about it once they're elected. So it's something that's put on the side. We will think about it later. We are now struggling with democracy, human rights. And yes, I do agree that these are also very important topics, but ecology is everything. Democratization, transparency, human rights, health, everything. So I think that the, the main problem is that people in politics don't understand that. Also, I will agree that the citizens are not always aware of the significance of the, the topic and the links between these two sectors. Of course, that we have activists who are very, very aware. And thanks to them, we have these topics in the media. They don't give up. They're on the streets all the time. However, communication between them and those sitting in the legislative and the executive branch is non-existent. I also teach at the university and I can say that the academia is also very silent. People who are able to research the aspects of this problem, as Professor Alemish said, I researched how many political parties had this topic in their campaigns. We could do many similar things in the academia, but we're not, and we don't have a clear communication. Take the Green Agenda as an example. In 2020, we had the EU strategy quite clear, quite ambitious, with quite clearly set goals in 2010. And in 10 years, they've managed to implement a lot of the strategies, some of the states even exceeded what has been set as, as a goal. Now we have a new agenda, but we are somehow stuck at the 2010 agenda. Our laws are obsolete. In the Parliament of the Federation, when we talk about the energy efficiency law, they say, well, we just adopted it in 2017. It was drafted in 2011. Nobody wants to work on that again, but everything changed in the meantime. If you look at it through the green agenda, we have new directives, and I believe that that's the largest problem here. We do have this topic in the programs, in the political agendas, but we do not have a clearly defined intention. We, don't, we are not serious about this. We don't have continuity in this regard. We have very rare politicians who continue with a certain topic, and I in fact, moved from the non-governmental sector into the political sector. And, you know, it took two or three years for the NGO sector to actually reach out to us because they've seen that finally we do have continuity. Many people give up because they see they don't have any collocutors in parliaments or assemblies. That is why this session and many future sessions are important to communicate all of this with the NGO, with the citizens, but also with the academia, with uh, people, everyone, people in parliaments, and that we know what is being done. The Green Agenda, it wasn't mentioned uh, many times, but this is a fact. The Green Agenda has a budget. We have so many strategies. In fact, those are wish lists we don't have a budget for them. So you cannot have a clear determination, a cause to implement that. Nine billion Bosnia and Herzegovina and other countries in the region are there on the plate for us to take until 2030. Our politicians don't see that. There were other options, other funds of the European Union that we never managed to use. And now we keep saying we don't have budget in money, we do not have funding, but why don't we rely on that money? I mean, we just need to have good projects. You have led me to the capacities uh, question. Projects, the ability that we have to absorb financially that. Uh, is there expertise in the political parties 
to prepare projects, to prepare project proposals, to launch them in the context of really approaching this as experts to engage the academia, civil society, citizens, institutions. Is there any such approach that we can detect? Nasha Stranka really does have a team of people working on that. We have Sanella Klaric and no need to further explain who she is and other people who really are into the green topic. It is a part of our ideology among the first few items, so green policies, human rights, that's what we are recognized for. Whenever we launch an initiative, it's always a semi-final product for the governments, for the executive. But in Zen Sadaba Canton, I will just you know, speak about this canton. So I don't want to uh, um, maybe make a mistake about other cantons. But this canton, Zen Sadaba Canton, does not recognize the 9 billion. They're not interesting at that point because those 9 billion cannot be used for, you know, um, recruitment of members of their parties, for funding of the campaign, you know, all the things that they've been doing for decades. So green policies is not something that's relevant for them because there is no personal interest there and there is no uh, interest with respect to the constituency because they only have this machinery that votes for them. So that's the biggest problem in Bosnia and Herzegovina. When you come with a good initiative, for instance, in school and kindergarten, and so let's introduce ecology as a mandatory subject, you get a response from an opposing political party that they should that we should perhaps introduce, you know, defense and protection as a subject. And they discuss about, you know, the defense subject more than ecology. Same in preschool, you know, all the topics that are not suitable to them, to their capacities. You know, they cannot be engaged to lecture on ecology. But, you know, we can have I don't know, 67 positions of uh, a receptionist at the cantonal hospital in Zenica, for instance. So it's just the lack of knowledge. And I'd just like to mention the Center for Monitoring of Environment Protection that in 2013 was established by the government as a body that should monitor the environment. However, this center, and it's now 2021, uh, has not found six people who need to work with these softwares and hardwares and everything. From 2013, we've been allocating funds and we've been buying equipment for that center, but they cannot you know, recruit anyone because they don't have similar experts among their human resources. So in our case, it's a big problem. Uh, we have a mediocre, semi-literate people employed at different positions and people who are experts cannot get a job. You've mentioned the initiative of Mr. Lemes in the assembly of Zenica Doba Canton. Do you have perhaps in percentages an overview of the initiatives launched at the assembly that refer to environment protection. So you had your initiative, anything in Sarajevo perhaps? Well, it depends if they're strategic or populist. I had the initiative uh, for um, the forests and in the study grad. It, it wasn't a populist initiative. In fact, it is a very realistic initiative during the siege Sarajevo somehow uh, lost its forest and, and the woods. So the idea was to grow a new forest. So 
but there are no capacities in Nasha Stranka and Narode Pravda to meet the needs of the projects themselves. We don't have many experts, we don't have many people who are able to um, implement projects according to requirements of international institutions and I've seen many of these projects and we are always searching Narod and Pravda uh, for experts not related to the party at all but people who really are experts they don't have to be members of the party we are always in search for them and I can honestly say that none of our political parties have inter-party capacities to uh, uh, to deal with this so we really need to open to other experts. Also, uh, there are international consultancies that really draw a lot of money and uh, the question now is how much we could get, you know, for our experts. Thank you, Mrs. Kladic and Mrs. Amic. In any program of any political subject, you can have an excellent idea, but the question is whether an implementation will happen and whether you're position or opposition. So that's the first question of all. There is no position, the ruling party, that will accept anything from opposition, be it ideal, never mind, or they will just sideline it. And when a catastrophe happens, uh, then we deal with the consequences. In the city of Tuzla, I used to belong to a political party, things are the same. In 2014, we had horrible floods and landslides. We still haven't rehabilitated all the areas. Last year or two years ago, we had a huge flood of the sports center, cultural sports center Maidan. It was due to negligence. And then you see assistant mayor for civilian protection and says, we have in the future to get used to these events. It was a little bit before the election campaign and we still haven't reconstructed or rehabilitated everything. So what is the reason? I can say the reason is the change of government because we have a single political subject since the 1990s uh, in Tuzla. So in Tuzla with 100,000 population, we do not have separate system for uh, wastewater and rainwater. So, I mean, they keep saying, yes, this will be distributed or separated. There is a continuity of government in our case. So they can resolve this, but they don't want to. Why? At that point of time, that's not politically profitable, first of all. Second of all, we can have regulation plans in cities. This is done by the local communities. Tuzla is a city, as Mr. Kara just said, without any wind. So we are valley, like Sarajevo. I later found out what is this rose of winds and how it works. But you know, along the rivers in Tuzla, we have now skyscrapers. No experts are listened to. You know, the professionals and experts definitely are being ignored. So people who, for instance, used to uh, stick posters on, on, on walls are now being recruited for very important positions. My daughter lives in Germany and when my, when my wife visited her, there was a training how to recycle. My daughter once paid 300 euros fine and then she had to learn. So there is always a whip and whoever paid a fine for doing anything, I don't know, changing your oil on the street. In Switzerland, for example, a neighbor, if he reports you, will benefit from that. In our case, there can be a physical fight. So, no fine. I'll try to answer the question about the capacities and about the number of initiatives that you've asked. It is true. If the initiatives come from opposition parties, they are a priori rejected. And when you know that, then it's very important to work with the citizens who are very loud 
on the ground who are visible and who've already raised the media interest in the topic. And you know, with the declaration on the protection of rivers who were in, who, that was developed by the Coalition for River Protection, you just have this common cause. And then the MPs are too embarrassed not to support it. And you do that before the local elections and you use the momentum to push them to. So that is being wise in communicating. So when you recognize people who are MPs in the parliament who really want that to happen, it's important that you play with that. The political parties do not necessarily have to have the capacities to write such documents and to know about this, but they sh should have the capacities of communicating with people who are knowledgeable in it. So, you know, in the assembly, in the parliament, you get a lot of topics that you just don't know anything about, but if you are ready for a substantive communication, then you will do what the citizens want and not what a populist agenda would dictate. And what is another important thing, and this makes me very angry. Now, the 9 billion, we always say, hey, we don't have the capacities, this is what the UNDP is doing, this is the World Bank thing. Well, we allow them to, because as of 2002, European Union has been giving us money and the technical assistance through IPA projects to build the capacities. And the Ministry for Agriculture and Rural Development, for instance, together with the payment agency, was supposed to take the money from DG uh, uh, Agriculture, but that money went to UNDP. But we allowed that to happen. We cannot sit here and say, oh, that's the best model. It's not the best model. And that's something that we should be fighting against so that the 9 billion somehow is absorbed by us through our institution. But the question is how to build the trust in those institutions and how to return the good capacities. Because you've seen in this affair, uh, diploma scandal, who works in the public institutions. And there is a lot of work and we've allowed so many things to get destroyed. But on the other hand, if you are aware of the problem, let us get organized to resolve this. I know it's not simple, but there must be a solution. Mrs. Agic. Speaking of the capacities, I'd say that we do have capacities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Not, not only in terms of legislative and executive powers. Center for Ecology and Energy has been working for the last 20 years. And uh, we do have also funds from local sources. We prepare projects and uh, we implement projects. And we're just one organization, civil society. I, and I don't claim that we are experts, the biggest experts in this, but there are many other experts who would like to participate in cooperation with other partners. We have three cross-border projects of the European Union. So I can, I can say that we do know something, right? And we keep saying we don't have money. How do our pensioners live? We have what we have and we need to learn to live with this. We do have some budgets. We are paying, you know, some funds for pollution, taxes, contributions. So let us just spend what we have in the right way. Use the maximum and utilize everything that we can, you know, on the side. Let us just join forces. We are not enemies, the legislative executive branch at any level in the canton to an entity at the state level, I, I suppose that we all care about the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So let us join forces, let us design plans and strategies, and let's make teams that will work together. Everyone will contribute free of charge in the preparation if we are aware that it's something that's for the common good and for the benefit of, our all, of us all. Just briefly. About the first panel, but also about what Jamila said right now, uh, with the Federation Ministry, Civil Society Organization, Ecoforum Zenica, and again with the support and assistance of a uh, uh, foreign foundation, we've uh, made a project of inclusive dialogue. And we gather together the institutions, the polluters and civil society. And we've managed to build trust and build cooperation among ourselves. And what we've learned through this project is that for this type of cooperation and for any type of joint action, 
any type of supplementing uh, the capacity buildings, it is necessary, if we want success, to uh, be equal. So to have, you know, 3%, as Jamila mentioned, is coming from local sources of funding, and it's mostly international funds, international donors. So civil society organization cannot be an equal partner to institutions when the institutions are financed from the budget. And we have to come up with ways to find projects. So it's important that we are equal. And there are civil society organizations that are grant hunters. We have to admit that there are many types of civil society organizations. And I believe that the cure for this is transparency so that the funds that are there, and I will never agree with the saying we don't have money. We do have money. We have the Federation Fund for Environment Protection that collects 30 million km annually and they don't know how to spend it. A few years ago we made an analysis. They, in fact, put 5 million km into a bank, interest rate 0. Point, I don't know what percentage. They didn't spend the funds, so they just, you know, put it in the bank. So the thing is that we can uh, overcome lack of capacities by uh, and through cooperation. What do you think? Would it be meaningful? And you mentioned the fund. Maybe the fund is one of the formats established in this way. Would it be possible to have a, a, a special line ministry? So in addition to these multifunctional ministries, would it make sense and would it give more political importance to this topic if we had a separate uh, a line institution? I put this down uh, on my paper. What is going on right now? And I will now speak on behalf of the Council for Rural Development. I've brought here just a few scientific publications were developed by interdisciplinary teams. And then when you have this, you have arguments that you can present to the politicians for initiatives, resolutions and everything else. So what happens very often in our case is that when we have reviewers, they call us and say, for instance, if we put, we should establish the agency for environment at the state level. And they tell us, no, this is a politically sensitive issue. Please delete this from the document of, you know what, non-governmental organization. That's a problem because we are all afraid to talk about state level institutions because this is a very sensitive, politically sensitive issue and entails constitutional changes. But we must talk about this. First of all, because, you know, partnership agreement between the EU and Bosnia and Herzegovina, that has been defined a long time ago. All the agreements that we have with them clearly specify the instructions as to what Bosnia and Herzegovina needs to do to enter the European Union. Among other things, there are some state level institutions that are mentioned, such as the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, uh, of Environment, agency or ministry for environment and energy, etc. So in that sense, we have to be very clear in the NGO sector, in economy, but also in our policies, if we want to be brave and say this is the only solution. Not This is not the, the, the case of us being very specific and we need these ministries. It's, it's so because all the countries have such ministries and such ministries take over the role that was mentioned by the colleagues. So practically when you have donors such as European funds, you have European funds and, and then international donors are taking the money because we don't have such an agency and we haven't, uh, 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 the, the European Union does not trust us to give us the money through our institutions. We would have more work, but yes, more money would stay here. So I loudly call us all to be very brave in any role that we find ourselves in, either in the non-governmental sector or the academia or politics, to clearly speak out about what is best for Bosnia and Herzegovina, for its citizens, and that we could, if we do so, be able to use the funds that are available. We only have our funds. Yes, they are of a lesser amount, but let's not forget that there were many abuses of the local funds and nothing has been done at that level either. Yeah, that was one of the questions that we raised in the first panel. How transparent were reports on the use of these funds? And then 
Ms. Ranić said actually that there were no uh, overview of the spending. You know, maybe you have like um, an overview of the activities, but not the organizations who implemented these activities. You know, so so is it re what is it possible really to do with that? You know, is this something that is realistic? When we formed the new government in January, we had the Ministry of uh, Utility and economy and some urbanism. So now we have actually, yeah, that was a quite lengthy title. Yes, now we've just uh, merged several issues under one ministry. And one of the colleagues from the majority asked that environment be at the first place, you know, but of course, this really depends on the politics. But the idea was really that the utility company actually becomes a holding so that the ministry not be responsible for it, but rather a company, an enterprise that will be responsible for that. And in that way, we'll also actually relieve the capacities of the ministry because we are struggling with having sufficient staff. And of course, now the question was whether we need to hire people in the cantonal institutions or the state level institutions, because again, the new administration uh, recruitment, which is a um, you know, hot topic as well. And of course, the question is actually how the public will react to this. I'm really glad to, to hear what Ms. Klarich said, that we don't have the capacity in the state institutions. I think that uh, Minister Karaj just said that there were some people sitting in the official institutions who are against the state. So this political momentum at this point is not something that we shall neglect. Uh, I do agree that on a technical level, we need to insist on what must be done and and maybe we need to be bold enough to dream that this is something that will happen in some period of, I don't know, three, four to five years, because it's difficult to expect that within one term, politicians can make a, such a change or to convince people in the other entity that this is an issue which has nothing to do with the national policy or protection of national interest, but that this is about the protection of the citizens, including them. Speaking of environmental protection, work through the projects, the um, grant hunters, Somehow we have some civil society organizations that are dealing thematically with environment and those who are really touch upon environment through some mandatory elements of the project. So often you have projects, um, you know, that are dealing with whatever topic, you know, then you have like two transversal topics, gender and environment. And most often you have situation that a project is done and then someone could maybe just check like, you know, whether our project complies with gender and environment, you know, just to kind of illustrate how um, important these issues are. When it comes to gender and environment, you know, or, you know, gender mainstreaming uh, into an, in the environment, are there any initiatives or any plan for the future activities in this area? I'd like to use this opportunity because um, when I worked in an institution in Tuzla, I had an excellent cooperation uh, of, uh, you know, Center for Gender Studies, you know, because the local community was very heavily involved, you know, there were some fo foreign donors, you know, some rotary clubs from abroad, but it, the project was about um, improving the capacities of the preschool ch preschool children uh, efficiency. We were improving the energy efficiency of such facilities and raising the value of such buildings because there are some facilities, buildings in the local community. And I can tell you that in this center, there were about 70% of women really employed, 90% even, okay. So for men, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that men are stronger, you know, uh, 
sex than than um, you know women, but I think that this may be something that is our post-communist you know legacy or whatever you know, but motherly attitude towards children and motherly attitude towards anything else really comes not from the stronger sex but from mothers you know so i when i worked in this institution uh, we were when i worked in this institution we were actually standing very strongly um, for protection of the shichki most So I just wanted to say that both my female colleagues and also my male topics are really kind of, you know, very strong advocates, you know, uh, in doing this, because this is really the point is with Trgovska Gora now. Now there are a lot of, um, you know, um, experts hired, but this is a national problem. You know, we earlier spoke about, you know, this and for the first time, there was a synergy created irrespective of the ethnic background. I don't know whether this issue will be addressed or not resolved. I'm, you know, skeptic by nature, but I feel that the EU is really hypocritical about us. But there is another thing on the East. So if you look, and I don't know, you know, but in Serbia, there is a very strong environmental movement which is just across the river of Drina, you know, just, um, you know, across the river to Zvornik, really, you know, so they're very strongly advocating for protection of that area, whereas in our particular country, on that political side, no one really takes any actions or speaks about it. So that's why I'm saying that, like, you know, this this is something that needs to be really addressed, addressed from the national level, you know, because now we so far have only reactions from the local level. Well, I don't know whether we need to have a line ministry. It would be terrific to have it, but I don't know whether this country is ready really to uh, have a line ministry for environment. Absurdity that I can see is that in schools, religious education is introduced in you know i don't know third or fourth grade of secondary school or even in a primary school but no one speaks about environment we spoke about women and our sensibility you know so i think that sen women are sensitized we do have power we who we have this instinct um for caring for, for things around us and of course, the health aspect is very important. But when you mention environment and in combination with health, then women tend to react spontaneously. So that's why I think that women need to become more active, not only in environment, but also in policies, policy making. So in the environmental center, you're right. We have about 90% of women, only, you know, handful of men simply because it's very difficult to find men who would like to work on raising awareness uh, for environment. But we mentioned during the panel, the cleaners do not think that in civil society organizations, the activists are people who are not educated. No, in all CSOs, we have engineers, people holding MAs and PhDs, but yes, we also have some volunteers and activists and we are willing to really um, do some small actions, you know, but uh, it's not that we are non-educated people there. Well, if we speak about the association where I um, work since 2002, we have been recognized for as an association which uh, always focuses on local economy. Whatever projects we work on, be it in the energy efficiency, whether this is something that is important at the local level or, you know, at some other level. So Mr. Vujovic said that um, this is something that increases not only the quality, but also the value of, of such property or the buildings that are owned by the state. So it's very important that with these projects, 
pre projects that are funded from the loans where we are borrowing in order to do something. So we need to see what are the products that we need if we talk about insulation material, windows, you know, the recuperation systems. So what of that could be produced in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Maybe we could use waste to, to have this, you know, because we often borrow from you know different banks and then we support someone else's economy by buying some styrofoam you know from german not thinking about the toxicity or by closing the schools you know uh, where the room do not breathe or what's the quality of air we did studies of that kind you know so for example we entered four schools did some measurements and now in Sarajevo, we have resolution passed as well as in Tuzla and in Gorazde and Zenica, I hope so, very soon. So um, on Wednesday, this will be discussed at the Parliament of the Federation. So all the journalists have been invited, in particular women in journalism. So we hope to really raise the awareness and to talk about the relevance of it, hoping that this resolution will be passed. Also, green procurement. Since 2019, with all those who were interested, we discussed about these issues because green procurement deals with these issues of local report importance, such as actually these raw materials, reducing the transport. And thanks to Delegate Lepic, we could now actually uh, communicate to this commission that is tasked to drafting this new public procurement law. We managed to impose certain solutions. So it's not ideal, but we do have a plan to continue working on this, to make some small steps, to make sure that we reach an MP or delegate that could support our initiative in the parliament. So we recognize the issue. We do a study. For example, in our case, we are mostly funded by the donors simply because you know we essentially speak about this politics about the environment that's why no institution are willing to support us because they see us as someone who tends to complicate things we would like to have all these issues addressed you know at a substantial level so having an open space policy is also very important we have no let's say, uh, you know, university or school dealing with the, you know, uh, space architecture, you know, so with all due respect to these public enterprises, but, you know, we see this outfield, they don't have sensitivity nor expert knowledge to do things properly. So there are so many things, you know, when my children ask me, why am, why am I still here? Then I tell, tell them, there's a lot of work to do be done, you know. Elsewhere, you would be one in the number of, you know, people talking about this. And the Green Agenda has shown that we are all in this together, on the same path to address this issue. But in our context, no one deals with this. So it's very important that we persevere in this and also that we all together think about how to help the local economy because the environmental policy is... Um, uh, economic policy and if we work with people in the NGO sector people who understand this and people from academia it's very important that you understand this and this is something that creates possibilities and for us this is a goal this is something that we will continue working on well maybe I can start with health because the health is actually uh, the you know something that we can start you know from when we speak about the relevance of environment. I fully agree with Professor Klarich that economy in combination with health is the good way to win people on our side, to have them on board to fiercely stand for these issues, to stand up for these issues, you know, because this is the only way. We can't really sanction people enough so, but I think that it's very important that we raise awareness. They need to understand that they need to change their attitude. And, you know, uh, if we all recall, a few years ago, we had a huge pollution. We had a month and a half in December and January with no sun whatsoever. We knew how much all this affected us, us children and seniors. 
and having realized what sun means to us, then we realized actually, you know, how important all this is. So there is this um, health aspect to it, something that could help us actually win people. And the other one is the economic aspect. I think that the other counter argument that people can give you um, when they fight against, you know, uh, environment is this economic aspect, you know. So if we observe what is it that we can gain economically through these policies, be it from agriculture or from IPA funding or through different services or education in this area, because this is actually, again, where we can earn something and tourism is one of the very important uh, branch in the economy, in particular in Sarajevo Canton, through the environment protection. And I think that this is the best way to really mobilize people, to, to really set them in motion and to have them advocate for this. Thank you, Ms. Remic. Well, yes, when we scratch the surface, then we see how many things are not really in its right place. And I wouldn't agree with colleague when it comes to sanctioning. Why? I'm also president of an association which worked on a project called Microplants in Kindergartens. This was a project where, by which we try to introduce children with healthy food. And we try to mobilize them to really plant, you know, things from the seeds, you know, and ultimately to be involved in preparing food. And then we've come to the point of realizing that obviously in our country, there is really no any control over the cell uh, purchase of pesticides because people are very without any restrictions actually use pesticides which are then you know brought to the market and sold so what is really healthy food or healthy diet in bih i'm saying this simply to say that you know this is the result of the fact that many things are not really controlled or regulated obviously because we don't have a system but if we had a system where the expert community would regulate um you know the food or you know the energy efficiency or the clean air architecture or name it only then we could say that we could live normal life Up until then we could have as many panels of this kind as you wish but we will not really resolve anything why did i say that i disagree with colleague about sanctioning it is not popular to introduce sanctions but on the other hand i'm asking myself how is it popular to send so many instructions and to kill small entrepreneurs and to sanction them for whatever small um, offenses they make or violations which exist nowhere in the world? You know, they're coming up with whatever, you know, nonsense requirements such as the size of the flag or whatever, you know, decisions that must be framed and hang on the wall so but when yeah i mean it's popular to sanction the entrepreneurs but it is not popular really to sanction people who throw garbage inappropriately but i think that in this country it is possible to build a system to make sure that the oldest functions just as it as it functions in germany or in switzerland and we could actually catch up with uh, the rest of the world in terms of this um, more appropriate behavior. Well, yeah, but we need to work on education, on educating people from the kindergarten. And I wouldn't say that Germans made it by sanctions only. This is something that they developed over the time, you know, by working on education in different areas, even religious education, you know. That could be the platform to teach children how to behave in nature, you know, or defense and, and protection, teaching you how to love your country, to look after the country, to, you know, these are all different ways of really educating generations to be more environmentally aware and to fight for the cause, you know, to see, you know, so 
maybe sanctions could lead us to some progress but then of course without if this is not coupled with the education if this is not really fully understood by them i don't think that we can make any substantial progress okay we will leave some uh, time for questions um, from audience but i would just like to make a summary of what you have said namely we have different views and it was rather refreshing to see the political structure that could use this combined approach of motivation and sanctioning just to show that they are politically ready to sacrifice their popularity to point the relevance of the policy they implement. I think that this could apply to all stakeholders in the process, including the foreign donors. By opening the topics, by keeping the, these topics, you know, high on the agenda, you really attach the importance to this topic, you know, and of course, giving us opportunity to hear your views, both, you know, the, the ones that you agree on and those that you disagree on, that's all fine. So can we now collect all the questions? I will write them down. And if you have any particular person that you'd like to answer, then please uh, indicate so. Thank you. I'm a citizen of Sarajevo um, Canton, Biljana Banovic. Mr. Jakupovic, since I'm an economist, a specialist for integration, communication, marketing and PR, I'd like to tell you something. It's a piece of friendly advice. Problems of raising awareness of us citizens, all of us, irrespective of the canton which we came are not to be addressed through the marketing campaign. This is how the problem is presented, not, not communicated. How many times, as a proponent of some solution or initiative, how many times have you asked for cooperation of a civil society organization? How many times you made um, step towards them or reach out to them because obviously in your political parties you have no capacity but if you had done this I'm pretty sure that some of them would respond the same thing you know about the gender you know so obviously all of us of course we could um, you know give contribution on you know on behalf of the area that uh, you know, we do. So obviously, you know, I would like to invite you to be more responsible when it comes to gender mainstreaming, you know, in different environmental policies. So, and also if we uh, speak about the landfill in this city, as a citizen, I pay a fee for the garbage disposal. So you, as the government, need to find a solution where this garbage will be disposed of and how all this garbage will be used rather than to pollute the soil, water and air. I'm in favor of restrictive measures, but also sanctioning people who are throwing garbage around or people who, who have animals, pets, who do not collect, um, you know, the stuff after their pets so i think i don't know how to put it really i mean fine yes we should have sanctions but from the moment when the ruling structures be it at the local level or upwards when you provide appropriate containers for let's say um, selecting garbage but not to have all that sorted uh, you know waste being dumped in one place again okay so thank you very much for your contribution let's see are there any other questions hi everyone my name is Nejad Ahbic Association Mreže Competencia from Zenitsa I see uh, among the panelists, three politicians and 
three persons who are environmentalists, I would say. So as a citizen and as a representative of the association, so I don't know whether we're looking at this issue of the environment, you know, in a fragmented way, because by end of March, we complete the discussion about the air quality, and then we again resume to this discussion in October. But all oh, we should really be kind of, you know, guided by the weather forecast, because this is when the politicians start asking that all the cities report on the, you know, the metering of the pollution. So I think that this is something that we should be dealing with for throughout the year, you know, 365 days, you know. A few days ago, I've heard that Zenitsa city was one of the most polluted cities or the second uh, most polluted city in the world, and Sarajevo was actually fifth most polluted city. I mean, we're looking at all this in a rather fragmented way, you know, so I would really love to have politicians to take a stand on this, you know, because, of course, you know, as soon as the, um, you know, winter is over, then we will again, you know, be forgetting about it. But I would like to have this issue discussed 365 days, not only in the season where the pollution, when the pollution is the most visible one. Okay, of course, you know, I, and also I'd like to ask the media, media also need to really report on this during the forecast report. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? My name is Valentina. I'm representative of the Resource Center for Environment Threats. I just want to say that within the NESP project that we implement, we closely cooperated with the uh, entity environmental ministries and uh, we also work on them on the key reforms of strengthening um, reform of legislation governing the environment. So among other things, the project deals with these matters. Today, we could hear some excellent panelists and um, we could have heard what else we have in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have the excise duties, we have different charges that are collected, none of which are used for targeted purposes. We also heard about politicians who are promising a lot about environment, but not doing much after they're elected. And there are people who care not at all about uh, the environment and they would rather throw paper into the river or on the streets rather than to use the waste bins. We also have some opportunities to use some European funds which we are not using. So we have some protected areas, not much, but we have not much use of it because we don't have any funding to support it, to preserve them. We have heard that the legal damage is to be eventually paid by citizens, irrespective of whether they will be sanctioned for what they are doing or not doing. Ultimately, it all boils down to the fact that the citizens will pay. So the question could be primarily for the citizens of political parties with us today. So what is it that you are most proud of when it comes to environment. So what is it that you did as part of your term or in your private life that makes you very proud? And then question for all of us, is there anything because uh, now I have listed, you know, all the things, you know, and I just try, I'm trying to identify the weakest link here. So because obviously we are talking about a chain which is absolutely made improperly. So the question is actually, how can we make things work? So can we really make an impact on anything? You know, can we just make at least one change, change which may not be actually an instant change, but something that will in the long run lead to some change for better? Thank you. This is the last question, and we will end it with this one. I'd like to ask the MPs to focus in the future on the EU progress report, because that report tells it all. 
what we need to do, what we have to do, what ministries, what directives, everything. I don't know about the federation government, but for cantonal governments, because cantons also have a, a, an important role to play in coordination, we always read that report. Serbia got the report. I was just checking yesterday. The prime minister was defending this uh, the position. I mean, we don't pay as much attention to that report. And that's the most important report. The directives are, you know, our um, savior here. So we really need to focus on that. So what are you proud of privately the most? What initiative? We have to start from our own yard. What are we proud of? What is our scope? How broad is our scope? We talked about decarbonization of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Tuzla has one of the best uh, district heating systems. So what will Tuzla uh, look like in 10 years? How many individual stoves we have, even if he is a minister for the next 10 years? How many heating pumps can we install? How many pellet burners can we install in accordance with the ecological standards? Would that make up for 10% of what we have now? That's a very important question. We will save it for next session. And, you know, economic independence is key here. Tuzla Canton produces 50, 60% of electricity. We have devastated land. We have craters. Sarajevo Canton, they have a billion budget. City of Sarajevo. 300,000 people. So until we balance this, so that's the most important initiative to you. We have the greatest exporters, chemical industry, base industry, uh, mining. So if this environment fund is, I don't know, 16 million, doesn't invest into the most endangered places, Zenica, Tuzla, 80% of the funds should be allocated to those places to somehow make up to those people, you know. So Sarajevo breathes the air from Trebevich and I breathe the air in Tuzla that comes directly uh, from the thermal electric plant. In Zenica, for instance, same, we're, we're, we, it's not a, a level playing field. Let's be equal first and then we will see. Let us try to balance uh, the river pollution and the air pollution. Let us be economically fair to somehow balance. Oh, you mean reallocation of public funds to have more equality. Okay, thank you. Well, what initiative am I proud of? But the implemented initiatives, I will not be speaking about initiatives that I submitted, but nobody ever considered them. I uh, was one, I was the only councillor from Nasha Stranka in the city council. It's the same thing now in the cantonal assembly. But really, sometimes one person make is enough to, to make some uh, changes. So in the city, assembly and we were voting on uh, the five uh, small hydroelectric power plants and I was against. Also Nasha Stranka was the key vote on the Yamnitschki slap of the hydroelectric power plant. So basically it was just, you know, one raise of hand that was deciding and that was me. So that's why I'm very happy about that. Well, it seems to me that we keep coming back to economy and funding. No, not enough funding. You know, when we talk about the green agenda, debate for the uh, green agenda were the billions of euros. 
but I'm not sure that we will be able to use any of those uh, billions. And also, whenever we hear decarbonization, we immediately start asking questions. What do we do with our miners? What do we do with our thermal electric power plants? I even heard today we cannot resolve the issue of miners overnight. Well, nobody's expecting it, uh, us to do, but we have to have a strategic commitment to do so, and we need to have a clear course of action as to where we're going and to decide whether we need 20, 30, or 50 years to do so, but we need to commit. When it comes to decarbonization, we've forgotten of uh, a potential that Bosnia and Herzegovina has. We have a lot of dead capital. We have a lot of citizen savings. We have billions of KM in savings in banks, and the interest rate is very low. So it's dead capital. There is no investment. There is no development. On the other hand, we have a problem, and we don't know what to do to resolve the problem with energy and coal. So why not open the market for consumers so that the citizens can invest, not only for them to be producers of electricity. For instance, I use my savings to set up solar panels. No, but the citizens you know, start to be consumers in terms of batteries, in terms of uh, uh, storing energy. There is huge potential. And then have, you know, combination, wind energy, solar panels, existing hydro power plants, and introduce energy efficiency measures. And in that way, with that combination, we can resolve the, the issue of energy poverty and energy independence. And I believe that gradually we could just give up on coal and the traditional uh, um, black industry that we rely on. I think that we could launch that and it got stuck in the legislative framework, the law on renewable energy sources and all the other implementing regulations that would make it possible, you know, or facilitate this approach. I know many people who would want to invest, but it just doesn't pay off. How about your initiative? Well, the two of us always are trying to uh, to win the first spot. Well, I will hear um, talk from the position of an MP in the Federation Parliament. So I am really proud that in the first year of my mandate, I managed to win a thematic session on energy and the, I'm the only woman member of the committee uh, for energy industry. And I really earned their trust of all the members and we really are very active in that committee. And I'm also proud that I've managed to introduce communication with an NGO sector and with the experts and we've managed to um, really work through this declaration on the protection of rivers even though the initiative came from the opposition but I was the one who submitted it and really we use this declaration very much at local level at cantonal level to fight this trend of making small uh, uh, hydropower plants at least until we have a strategic document. Also, the quality of air in internal uh, spaces, this was adopted in three Kansas. It is in the agenda of the parliament. This has been submitted also to Republika Srpska. Also, financial support in agriculture should be, this law should be uh, harmonized with the law on agriculture to reduce abuses of um, money and finances. We've seen how much money ends up in wrong hands. And also, a renewable energy operator um, and cogeneration operator. So through all the initiatives, we've managed to uh, replace the director, despite the fact that he formally resigned. Uh, the auditor's report is catastrophic. So we will continue working on resolving this. And as Sanya said, irrespective of the fact that you come from a position, if you're really active and if you come with arguments and if you do have the support of citizens and you map well the colleagues that are open to communication, really things are possible. Well, my initiative individually we're always around protected 
areas, primarily Trebevich. I underlined in the beginning that sometimes these initiatives can be populist. I also worked on the protection of Mount Igman uh, that has been neglected fully. I will not go into the details here. Also, the initiative that passed, and I hope that the citizens of Canton Sarajevo soon will have an opportunity to look at the idea for the park on Strelište that is uh, linked with uh, Hume Forest and Park. I feel, you know, part of the majority and whatever our colleague, I am part of the majority, several of what my colleague suggested we were ready to discuss uh, what Nasha Stranka did. There was also one question about the final resolution of waste, a procurement of containers. I do agree that the waste disposal system is not good. We do not have recycling. Everything goes into the same place. And we've heard from the ministry about the uh, introduction of special ecological police modeled on the experiences of Belgrade. We still have obstructions in Sarajevo today in this regard. It's the Naples scenario. We often have, you know, the situation that, you know, the, the trash containers are empty and the, the trash is outside around them. And Smiljevici landfill above Bucha Potok, it's a problem that will remain a problem for a long time. There is a solution, the most modern one, but very expensive, that we thought of introducing on Butili. Uh, was there any other question? I, I mean, the campaign, yes. The campaign uh, should also be followed. Okay, so we will leave the break for the for answering the, the questions and giving feedback. Also, just to mention that I agree with uh, the men from Zenica. This is what I initiated, that as of March, basically, when we don't see how much the city is polluted, we should be thinking about new possible solutions and directions. Well, if you ask me what I'm proud of, not only me, but at the Center for Ecology, we managed somehow to find a measure of being between being critical, but also being proactive in providing ideas and options and possibilities. So we are critical, true, but we at the same time manage to keep a partnership relationship with the legislation, legislative and the executive and local and cantonal levels. We have representatives of federation institutions and cantonal institutions, and we have partnership relationships with all of them. We are often on different sides. We have different opinions, but we manage to find a common language and to find a common opinion and attitude and to agree. But the question is to what we could do. I think all of us who are sitting here, we should start from ourselves. We should not do anything that we should, uh, we think is not environmentally friendly. That's number one. And now when we go back into our local communities, we should sit down together. Everyone who can contribute to the strategic approach to resolving environmental problems. So all the stakeholders and try to identify projects and ideas and solutions and then try to find funding for them. There are many problems all around it and it's the huge the biggest priority to sit down and try to agree and contribute as much as possible with what we have, with the expertise that we have. But if we have a common good, if we have general interest for the Canton, for the Federation, I believe that we will manage to find experts and activists who will gladly contribute to the resolution of these problems or challenges. Thank you. Thank you for ending uh, this panel today with such an encouraging message. Just uh, briefly to refer to the manual on environment protection, I'd like to commend everyone who worked on this. This is really a very concise and very user-friendly manual. So I just had a look 
that this was developed in 2020. And I'd like to note that there have been significant changes uh, with reference to uh, the environmental uh, approvals and licenses and also the directives. So if you plan for a second edition, please update this. And I have a question from the Canton Sarajevo MP. I am, it's just about the Smiljevici landfill and the Butila. We provided environmental licenses with the guarantees and the promises of the competent ministry for utility affairs and infrastructure at that time. And Butila, for, but there were guarantees that uh, the uh, Smiljevici and the Butila sludge and wastewaters, all of that would be fixed. I don't know if it was fixed, but politics should have resolved this. And this is very important for Sarajevo Canton. I personally worked on those cases. Do you have any information as to what? I think you will get better information from the cantonal ministry. Butili is a plant, a very contemporary state of the art plant that we plan to construct. It's not the, the sludge issue. Sorry, we are over the time and we are ending here with the questions, but this is, of course, a very interesting topic. Uh, I have to go just through the main main themes that we've covered. Of course, I will not share any conclusions. So there is a need to be more loud on the political agenda to talk about these topics, to uh, somehow find a common interest between the different parties to advocate for a uh, higher visibility of environmental topics. We have the low capacity. I think this was a brutal assessment, but quite realistic. And with due respect to the existing expertise, and also there we mentioned the relationship between the citizens and the, the experts that we have in institutions. So we've opened up this uh, discussion that we need to work more on capacity building, and we need to work more on the building of the knowledge. We also touched upon the dominance of international partners in terms of access to funding, which uh, weakens the absorption, absorption capacities of the state at all levels. There should be a more equal and more just system of uh, allocation and distribution of funds. We talked about the inequality of citizens depending on the state, uh, on depending on the part of the state or entity uh, that they uh, live in. And also, uh, Mrs. Klaric mentioned the Committee on Energy and Environment. This is very important. We have a, a gender quota there and uh, management structures and gender equality. So that's the response uh, for to the question about gender equality in this entire field. Thank you very much. I will end here. Thank you for all your attention. Thank you for your openness and transparency. And I'm looking forward to continue this discussion with you.